the power that you have inside of you is unmatched anywhere unmatched what i mean by that is we carry around such a huge resources within ourselves that we can tap into and literally start creating the life that we've always wanted I've been asked so many times, hey, how did you go from making 30K a year to making six figures? And it's like, I can give you the steps, right? I can give you the how-tos. I can give you exactly what I did, how it happened, because I have, I've, I've given that information out. But most likely, you won't be doing any of that stuff because it doesn't begin with my journey. It begins with yours. And what I mean by that is first you have to study yourself. And how do you study yourself? Well, the best indicator of what you're focusing on up here, your thoughts, you look at your results. And what I mean by results is you look around you. Where are you living? Who are you with? Who, what kind of friends do you have? What does your bank account look like? Now, when you start at, like analyzing yourself in those aspects, that's what I mean by focusing within yourself, is you actually sit down and you're like, wait a minute, what are my current results? Well, I live here, I hang out with this person or these people, I have this amount in my bank account. Those are your measurings, right? This is how you're measuring your, your success per se. Because if you don't see where you currently are, then you're kind of bypassing the first, you're, you're bypassing the first step, which is what are you currently focusing on? What's that major idea in your mind that you're spending most energy on? And that to me, becoming that aware was like eye-opening. Okay, I see what's going on. This is why I keep attracting what I'm attracting because I'm holding on to this idea that's not serving me where I want to be at. So the first thing that you're going to do is realize, okay, these are my results and these results are probably stemming from these ideas that I'm literally having every day, every day, every day, okay? So when you realize what thoughts those are because here's the thing, in my coaching, I've found out that not everyone is on the same page when it comes to knowing what they want. My first question when I'm coaching is, what do you want? And the amount of times that I get a blank stare, it's crazy because you're not the only one. If I ask you right now, hey, what do you want? You're going to maybe, right, if, if you're <laughs> most, like most of my coaching clients, you're going to be like, I don't know, I want a good life. Okay, well, what does a good life look like? And you'll say things like, well, I don't want to live paycheck to paycheck. I want to make sure that when I drive to Starbucks, like I don't have to look at my account. Or when I'm doing groceries, I don't have to look at my account. And then I dig deeper, I'm like, okay, well, how much income do you want to earn to feel that way. I don't know, like a, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year. What would you do with that money? And we start digging, we start digging, we start digging. And then they realize, oh, this is the amount that I want to earn because this is the lifestyle that I want to live. Because let me tell you, not everyone here wants to drive a Lambo and go on vacation every month and fly a jet out and have all of these things. A lot of the times what people are looking for is freedom. Freedom from being from debt. Freedom to have choices and decisions. If they want to travel that month, they can. They have it in their bank account. Freedom to visit any doctor that they want. The different reasons that we all have, there's just different reasons that we all have. So that's why I am such a stigler on first find out what it is that you want, right? I always go back to that because that would be, that's your beacon. That's like, okay, doesn't align with that, boop, take it out, right? So going back to your thoughts, when you start knowing what you want and the more you think about what you want, that's when you, you'll start attracting it. But here's the thing. Because we are human and we're having this human experience in this beautiful world, 
we tend to go back to the looping thoughts that we are used to. We are comfortable with those thoughts because that's all we've known. So I want you to picture like this bubble around you and that bubble around you is called your comfort zone. Anytime that you think of this grandeur idea, this big goal that you want to accomplish, this dream that you want, you're in this bubble of comfort, right? You get this idea of, ooh, I really, really want that house. Well, when you try to step out of that comfort, what your loops do, your ha habitual loops is, how are we gonna get that? You can't get that, you only make this much. This isn't, and it starts tell, uh, telling you the reasons you can't do it. Meanwhile, we don't know what's on the other side of that bubble. And I like to say, that line up that bubble with fear because you are scared. We are scared to get out of our comfort zone because we don't know any better. But where is the growth? The growth is outside our comfort zone. So eventually you're gonna to have to step over it, be like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to go through the feelings of uncomfortableness so I, I can get closer to my goals that I really want in this life, right? The way that you do that is by repetition. Repetition is the mother of learning. But what are you repeating to yourself? You're repeating to yourself the new thoughts that you're thinking of the things that you want. So if you really want a car, if you really want to make an income of X amount per month, per year, whatever it is, you're constantly thinking about that. Oh, if so here's an example that might help you. Let's uh, relate it to money because money is such a pull on us, right? Money is everywhere. We need it to survive and so on and so forth. If so, let's say that it's uh, $10,000 a month, right? and you want to have an income $10,000 a month because you did the math and you're like, if I make that much, I'm able to do this, this, and this. When you say I'm able to do this, this, and this, we're gonna call that your why. That is the reason why you wanna make 10,000 a month. So when you start thinking about the 10,000 a month, you are going to come up with feelings. The first feeling is excitement. Oh, when I have, I, when I have the 10,000, I'm gonna start doing this, this, and this. The other feeling is, how am I gonna do that? I only earn this. When you start thinking and feeling that way, I want you to just decline it. Cancel those thoughts, cancel that feeling, and stay in the feeling of having the 10,000. Because here's what you need, your mind needs to expand on. Those $10,000 are already yours, it just hasn't gotten to you yet. And it's not gonna get to you if you're over here thinking how you're gonna do it, you're over here thinking, when it's gonna happen, if it's ever gonna happen, and then you lose belief that it's never gonna come. But if you're over here thinking and believing that those $10,000 are yours, and you're going to plug yourself in into this awareness of these 10,000s are in my realm, it's just not here yet, but you have belief that it will be, then you will attract it. It's not up to us when, and it's not up to us how, why, because in this world, we have so many infinite possibilities that our brains, our little human brains, cannot by any chance actually map out the how. That's God's job. Or if you're more in tune with the word of universe, that's God's job, that's the universe job. Because throughout those different ways of getting the 10,000 per month, those infinite ways, you are on your own journey because you right now don't know how to make 10,000. You need to go on a journey where you're gonna learn and learn all of these steps and learn um, all of these character building moments on what it takes to get the 10,000 into the physical form and stay with the 10,000. Because I don't want you to just manifest a little lump sum. I want you to be consistently doing it. And the only way that you can consistently do it is by changing your self image. It's by changing who you currently are. I say a lot of the times your current you will not get you to your future you. What happens between point A and point B, the, the person that you're becoming through point A through point B, then you have become and matched up with that frequency. But if you're trying to manifest 100,000 a month and you feel a disalignment with it, you're never going to manifest it. You're never going to bring it to your physical form because you're not aligning to it. So a lot of times, what you should do is align to a number that you feel really good about and 
start practicing those feelings of having it, feelings of how are you going to act with it. And that is all under self-image. So essentially who you're creating is a different person until that money comes physically because it's going to come. The, the moment that you believe that it's going to come, it will. And that's exactly what I did. I mean, that's like the science behind what I did to be able to marry the man that I literally wrote down, characteristics, um, physical um, aspects of him from his height to his eye color because I said, listen, this is what I said to myself, if law of attraction really works, then I'm going to put it to work. I'm going to literally write down exactly, exactly what I want. I wanted a man with green eyes because I never met my grandfather. My grandfather had green eyes. So I wanted a man six feet tall because my grandfather was six feet tall and I never met him. So I, <laughs> it's kind of weird how, you know, I mashed up those little things. I never got to meet my grandfather and I've heard so many great stories about him. So I, I picked those two um, things, uh, physical things. And then when it came to his characteristics, I said, I want him to be healthy, but not like a jock, but be aware of his health. I wanted him to be adventurous, like go camping, go do this. And he is exactly that way. So when you're in a relationship or out of a relationship and you're like, I want a man, I want a man, you need to get down and be like, okay, what exactly do I want in a man? Is he God-fearing? Is he healthy? Is he like this? Is he like that? And that's your list, right? Because what ends up happening is you're like, all right, now that I wrote down this list, now I'm going to act as if he's already here. I'm So what I did was I started making room in my closet. I took um, a side of my closet and I said, this is for my husband. And I, I didn't even have a boyfriend yet. I, then I took out all of my stuff um, at the end of the drawers. So I had two drawers um, next to my bed and, I, and on the bottom drawers I took out everything, all my socks, all my underwear and everything. I said, this is for my husband. Mind you, I'm living at my parents' house. I didn't have a boyfriend, but I already knew that, I, I mean, not knew, I believed, I had unwavering faith that this was going to happen and I was making space for it. All right, so my camera died, but essentially what I was trying to explain was you do not attract what you want, you attract who you are. So the moment that you become aware of the things that you are thinking and doing and then switching it to what you actually want to be like and aspire to do, then that's when you start attracting not what you want but who you are. So first you have to become that person. And the way that you become that person is by becoming aware. I know I sound repetitive, but I, it's so simple to like miss and so simple to understand, but it becomes a little complicated to implement because we're so used to our day-to-day. -day. We're so used to um, being just consumed with social media, our problems, and all of, all of the things, right? But when you dedicate a certain or allocate a certain amount of time to yourself and become aware of yourself, then that's when you're like, oh, that's why I keep attracting X, Y, Z, because I'm being this way, I'm thinking this way, I'm doing things this way. What if I change all of that and I say, okay, I aspire to be this person who has these things and now let me just act from that energy. And once I start acting from that energy, then I'm creating these boundaries of the things that I used to attract and now I no longer going to attract because I'm becoming this new person. That's why it's so important that instead of wanting to be someone else, just be a better version of yourself. One, another you does not exist in this world. So just focus on you. And two, you could never be anyone else. Yes, you might, you might uh, like how that person acts or dresses or whatever it may be. And that's nice, you're appreciating that person. But when you put more emphasis on another person, you're basically telling your current you isn't enough. And when you're feeding that to yourself, it comes out in your outer world. So 
I just want to point that out because it's so important, right? You can admire a person, love that person, how they are, whatever. But the moment that you're like, oh, I wish I could be like this person, have these many followers, have that kind of body, you're telling your current self, mm, you're not good enough. So what makes you think you giving and feeding yourself you're not good enough um, uh, subconsciously, right? This could be um, without even knowing. How do you expect your current self to give you exactly what it is that you want if you're not even being the person that you should be? Okay, so I hope this helps. I know it was a long-winded explanation. My camera died, and um, <laughs> yeah, I um, hope it didn't really mess up where I was going. I'm still going to put everything together, edit it together. But if you have any questions, drop them below. If you like this content, go ahead and like the, the like button thing. Um, subscribe. I'll be more consistent now um, with my videos. So I'm excited videos so I'm excited for that and other than that I'll see you guys another day bye